Greetings hobbyists and welcome to another Blender Basics video. All of these videos are designed for people relatively new to Blender looking to get a grip on exactly what this powerful program can do. And we'll cover all the elements that you need to know to get started including things like navigation, manipulating objects and all those tools that you need to achieve the results you're looking for. We'll do this in a series of short videos so they're all clearly labelled so you can easily search for them. And in each video we'll cover the bare basics while going on to things that are slightly more advanced so that as you continue on your journey through Blender you can improve the way that you use these different elements. And in this video we're covering the boolean modifier. So having covered the basic functions in object mode and edit mode I did want to cover booleans because although they're something that seems a bit more complicated most would consider them a basic operation in Blender. So let's start with quickly defining booleans and what they are. So booleans are actually search terms, for example if you're using Google, and they're best shown using these Venn diagrams where the green shows what we end up with. So we've got three major boolean operators, and which only results in the overlap between the two search terms, or which means you can end up with either of the search terms, so effectively it combines both parts of these Venn diagrams together into one whole, or not, where we're going to be searching for one thing but not the other so you're removing that from some of the searches and boolean operators in Blender do exactly the same thing though we use different terminology because otherwise this gets a little bit confusing now let's have a look at how that works in Blender so let's just delete the camera and delete that light and we're going to need to create two objects to basically work like our Venn diagram and these could be any two objects in Blender We'll select those and I'm just going to Shift and D and then we'll X this to make a copy and then I'm going to press Shift and R which repeats the last function. I'll do that to end up with four and then all I'm going to do is Shift and D and Z so that we've actually got eight. And we'll go through why I've got eight. I want to talk through several things here but the main thing we're going to be focusing on is these three. So why have I put booleans in a different video? Well booleans actually require us using a different panel and we're going to come over here and we're going to go to our modifier panel which is shown by this wrench type icon. Now there are lots of different modifiers available but we're just going to look at this one as probably one of the most important. So we're going to click here, this is going to be the object we want the boolean to act on. Now in some instances this won't matter which one we're using but I'm going to try and be consistent and do this one for each of these. We're going to add a modifier and we can then go to generate and then select boolean. Now nothing's happened at this point, but you can see we have our options here, and they've got different names, Intersect, Union, and Difference, and it automatically starts on Difference because I guess they're probably the one that's most commonly used. But effectively, the Intersect is the AND feature, where we get this overlap and only the overlap remains. The Union is the OR function, where we end up with both joined together as one object, and the Difference is the NOT operator, where we end up with one being cut from the other. So let's start with the intersect and we'll go through these in order. Now just for a term that you probably want to know, we generally talk about the object as the thing that's having the action done on it, in this instance the boolean modifier, and we need a term for the other object, and we often call that the cutter, even if it in a union isn't cutting away anything. And in the modifier we have this object which is what we use to select the cutter. So we're going to use that pipette, the other thing we can do is if we click there we can pick which cube we're working from and in some instances that might be easier you could hit F2 and rename this as cutter1 for example and come here and then find your cutter1 either way we're going to use our pet click that and you'll see that the cutter object remains visible when using the native tools in Blender so I need to come to this and press H to hide it and you can see we are left with the overlap. Moving on the other functions are fairly simple the other way you can get to this if you don't want to go through all these lists or you can't remember where they are is you just start typing in once you've opened the modifier panel and then we can select boolean we'll do a union now hit that one you can see we get this overlap because the original object is still there press H to hide it and we've got this working and then finally for the difference we select this and then H, the cutter object, and we can see that we've cut that out of our cube. So those are our three major operators. Now some things to be aware of. The first and most important is that this is a modifier. And the great thing about modifiers in Blender is that these are still active. They have not been decided. So for example, I could, if I want to, move this cube around. 
so with G, and you can see that it keeps updating this modifier as I move around because the other cube is not changing place. So we can move this around to the point where we want it to be. So this is really useful. The other way we could do this is that we could come and find our cube that's working on it. So we can see here that this is cube 13. Come and find where our cube 13 is hidden and bring that back. And I could always G and then let's say shift and Z so it doesn't move in the Z axis and then come and move to there and then hide it again. And we've got that working. So this is a really useful feature. Now there is a potential problem with that. Let's say I've got this cutter in place, but I want to move this cube and I don't want to have to go into find my cutter, bring it back, select both of them, G and Z them both up and then come back and hide this cutter. This seems very tedious. So what you can do is with this still acting before you hide this cutter is if you shift select on your Boolean object, press control and P and set a parent where you want to select object. What this will do is now this is twinned or parented to this. We call this the child in this instance. So this is currently both a cutter and a child. Sorry for all the terminology. And then if we move this one, the other object will move as well because it's been parented to it. If we select the child and move it though, the parent doesn't move with it. Now, what that means is I can press H to hide this. And now at this point, I can move this anywhere I want to without the Boolean changing position. And that means that if I do want to change the position of the Boolean, all I need to do at that point is to bring back cube 13. Now, suddenly cube 13 isn't here. Well, it's become part of cube 12. So we click here, find cube 13, and it is there. So this menu is what we call a nesting menu. One goes inside of the other. And at this point, I could, let's say, move that to there, and then H to hide it. And we've got that being changed. So there's some important choices. The other thing that we want to know that's important, we're gonna demonstrate here, is that this was working fine because we only had a clean overlap. Now I'm just gonna use a tool called Snapbase. If you're interested in this, I'll put a link to a video in the description going through that. And if we press G, B, and I'm just gonna grab that edge on the Y axis and then snap it to that one. If we get two faces here that are perfectly aligned, this face here has a perfect overlap with this face here, we get this problem of this face fighting and this can cause Blender some calculation problems. Let's come out of edit mode. And what that will mean is if we do exactly the same thing and do a Boolean modifier and we do a difference and I click fast, so we have these two solver options. If it's on fast as a solver option, I click here, this, let's just H this, causes some problems. You'll notice it hasn't done a difference Boolean. It's caused some issues. Now, that is because the fast option does some more basic calculations and Blender can't work out this perfect overlap in those basic calculations. So in most instances, I suggest having exact on, though if you've got some really complex objects, this can take longer to calculate. So just be aware of that. Now, finally, if we want this to be completed, at the moment this is a non-destructive operation, it's something we can still G and move around. If you want that to be completed, what we need to do is come up to our modifier panel, click there and click apply, and now at this point, this is permanent. And if we go into edit mode, let's say one, you can access all of these vertices. If I go back to the point where we've got the Boolean still active, if I go into edit mode, you can see that we come back to our original cube because at this point, this is not something that has actually happened in inverted commas. So I could do something like Control and R to create a loop cut, go into face mode, and then let's say extrude that out just for the demonstration. And then when I tab back into object mode, you can see that we get that Boolean back being shown. So that's worth noting is that this is not destructive until we tell it to be. Now, I do just want to finish by talking about a free add-on that's already included in Blender related to this. Now, add-ons are going to be the topic of the next video, and I'll cover them in more detail, but I think it's important to talk through now, as it's very useful for Booleans. So I'm going to go to Edit and Preferences, and I'm just going to type in Ball Tool. As I said, we'll talk about this way more in the next video. 
make sure that's activated and then we've now activated an add-on called ball tool now add-ons are something you should not be afraid of using straight as soon as you start using blender this idea of knowing that we need to use a pipette and things like that is not really doing anything to add to our general knowledge over what we can just do with the add-on and the add-on is vastly faster so what this allows us to do is use some shortcuts you're going to click on the object that you want to be a cutter first shift click on the object that you want to be the object that's affected and if we're going to do an intersection like we did up here you're just going to hit control and asterisk on your number pad and it must be on the number pad and then we get our intersection an added benefit of this is that it turns the cutter into this semi-visible outline though it's not quite an outline i'll come to that in a second so in many instances you might want to just leave that there so you can see it and this still works in exactly the same way that i can g and move this around but if i select this object and press g you'll notice it has automatically done that parenting so it's saved us a load of stages in what we'd normally have to do the only thing that's worth noting is that this automatically does this as the fast solver and we probably want to change that to exact however if we come back over here and then we're going to do for this one the union boolean for that we press control and then we press our plus so we can do that now what i'm actually going to do for this one is i'm going to delete out this cube and i'm going to press shift and a mesh and bring in a uv sphere and we'll just move this over to here and do exactly the same thing but this time with our sphere and then we'll be doing a difference boolean so that is control and minus now one annoyance here is that this then turns our object into what we call a bounding box it shows us the outline of the bounds of this box and not the outline of the object now this was sort of looking like it was doing the outline of the object because our object was a cube here but really it isn't it's doing exactly the same thing now thankfully this add-on if i just come back to preferences gives us loads of options here and we get to these by clicking here and we can set what we want to do we could set to automatically work as an exact boolean instead of it being fast so that'd be a good suggestion we can also display the cutter as a wireframe now this will actually set it as its outline instead of it being a box. Now if I get rid of that and then come back and we do exactly the same thing again, click, shift click and then control and minus, you can see that this gives a more preferable result, I think, in terms of our visualisation. Way better than what we'd have without our add-on because we've got this being visible as an outline but it's transparent so we can instantly see what's happened. And again, this is being parented. And while we can do this manually, why are we going to do that when a free add-on can do this all for us? Now, just as a quick addition to this, let's just select this. I'm going to shift and D and bring in another version. The other things that we want to know about this is that we can access this in a different way. If I click and shift click, if I press N to bring out my end panel and we go to edit, you can see we've got this Boolean operation here. And this gives us two additional options it looks like lots of options but i'm going to say they're two additional options the first is that we get the operation of slice now if we click and shift click and click slice you'll notice that we can then h to hide this and we end up with two separate bits we end up with our object here which has got this bit sliced out of it now what this has actually done is create multiples of the same object and for this one done a difference boolean which cuts this bit out and for this one did an intersection boolean but effectively it ends up with you get this part and this part separated so that is the slice boolean accessible from ball tools from this edit menu or you can hold down control and the forward slash on your number pad if you prefer those shortcuts the final thing that we've got here is we've got these auto boolean options if we have a look at what this is going to do, click and shift click, and we click difference, that is going to do a difference boolean. But the difference here is that the auto boolean, you'll notice, has not created a modifier. This is instantly a destructive process. So if you don't want to have something where you can edit it, there are very few instances where I would recommend using this over one where you can edit it later. But if for some reason you don't want to be able to edit it, this is the option for you. Now you can also do this as a shortcut as well, of course. 
All you need to do is instead of pressing control and let's say minus, you hold down shift at the same time and minus and it will do this auto operation or let's just do one of the other ones, control shift and then asterisk, which will do our intersection. So you do have access to this with the shortcuts as well. So there we go, that's everything you need to know about Booleans, including that bool tool add-on. Have a great day, guys.